Spencer a cell phone photo of his gun and said he would use it to shoot Michelle Obama. Secret Service spokesman Edwin Donovan said the officer was taken off his duties while the service investigated whether the remark was only a joke. Later, the Secret Service said the officer would not be charged. In 2013, 49-year-old Glendon Scott Crawford and 54-year-old Eric Fate planned to build an X-ray gun to target Muslims, but they also intended to kill President Obama with a lethal dose of radiation, silently and from a distance, they thought, using their planned machine. They targeted the president, according to them, because they had, he had allowed Muslims to come into the United States. Crawford traveled to North Carolina in October 2012 and asked for money for the weapon from a ranking member of the Ku Klux Klan. Crawford also approached Jewish organizations looking for funding and people to help him with technology that could be used to surreptitiously deliver damaging and even lethal doses of radiation against those he considered enemies of Israel. Both the KKK leader and the Jewish leaders tipped off the FBI, and the Crawford freight plot was infiltrated by two undercover FBI agents who supplied the would-be assassins with machine parts. In a secret recording of a meeting between Crawford and the undercover agents, Crawford said, I don't want money. You know what? After the last election, the electoral process is dead. Crawford and Freight were arrested in July 2013 after Crawford tried to connect a remote activation device to an X-ray gun, but the machine had been rendered inoperable by agents. Prosecutor John Duncan said, From our investigation, the device would have been capable of emitting X-ray radiation that would have caused death. Well, the internet was a huge source of threats against Obama. In late 2009, for example, the Secret Service investigated a poll posted on Facebook asking whether Obama should be killed. The agency spoke with the child who had posted it, and no charges were filed. A spokesman said, I guess you could characterize it as a mistake. Facebook removed the poll after it was brought to its attention. And there were more threats like this in the dark web where anonymous communications between individuals mostly ensures privacy, and the encryption most commonly used to enable secrecy is TOR, a system originally developed by the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory. In 2013, a website on the dark web invited people to make donations toward a bounty on the head of Obama. The fund for his assassination reached $20,000 by November. In another incident, 21-year-old Nathan Wine admitted sending a threatening email to the U.S. Army Recruiting Command the day after Obama's election. He wrote, I will not rest until this tyrant of America is gunned down, adding he would not mind going behind bars for being a trigger man on this tyrant and that the blood of Obama will run down the streets of D.C. The email was forwarded to the Secret Service and traced to Wine, who admitted to agents that he had sent the letter and that he planned to assassinate Obama. Wine pleaded guilty to threatening the president-elect and received a 36-month prison sentence. In 2009, 21-year-old Texan, Timothy Ryan Gutierrez hacked into the websites of the U.S. Department of Defense and the FBI. He said, I wanted to see what was really going on. There are 500 acres of encryption data to go through, but I found a slit through it. There's always a hole. Gutierrez says he didn't think the FBI would actually find the email message he left on the system. Earlier that year, Gutierrez had emailed the FBI's Washington office and announced, I'm going to assassinate the new president of the United States of America. P.S. You have 48 hours to stop it from happening. A second email threatened to blow up the Mall of America in Minnesota. Gutierrez said he had also rigged 40 pounds of explosives to seven cars outside the mall. Good luck, thank you, and God bless. You know the rest. Time is wasting, he wrote. The vast Mall of America parking lot was swept for bombs. When Gutierrez, who had been staying with his brother in Cortez, Colorado, was tracked down, he was interviewed by FBI agents and two Cortez police officers. Although both threats were taken seriously, Gutierrez was not arrested at the time. A few weeks later, after investigators had compiled sufficient evidence against him, a warrant was issued for his arrest and he turned himself in. Gutierrez said the threat against Obama was just a prank. I'm not mad about him becoming president, he said, but he's not doing what he said he was going to do. He's not doing anything for the lower class, just the middle and upper class. Medications are going up, not lowering, and jobs are being lost. His actions are going to get him in trouble. In May 2009, Gutierrez pleaded guilty to transmitting a communication threatening to kill President Obama and blow up the Mall of America in Minneapolis. 
Gutierrez was sentenced to four years of probation with the first 10 months in home detention with electronic monitoring. The judge ordered him to live with his mother in Andrews, Texas, and also ordered him to stay off the internet except to look for work. Hey everyone, Scott here. We're going to take a very short break for a word from our sponsors. On February 12, 2010, Secret Service agent Stefan Pazenzia received a telephone call from an FBI agent regarding an individual with the username Payne1488, who had recently posted a poem titled The Sniper to a website named nazispace slash newsaxon.org. Originally posted in 2007, the chilling poem read, in part, As the tyrant enters his crosshairs, the breath he takes is deep. His focus is square on the target as he begins to release. A patriot for his people, he knows the shot will cost his life. But for his race and their existence, it is a small sacrifice. The bullet that he has chambered is one of the purest pride and the inspiration on the casing reeds die Negro die. He breathes out as he pulls a trigger, releasing all his hate, and a smile appears upon his face as he seals that monkey's fate. The bullet screams toward its mark, bringing with it death, and when there was once a face, there is nothing left. The FBI identified the username as belonging to 28-year-old Johnny Logan Spencer. When the Secret Service found Spencer, he accepted full responsibility for writing the poem and admitted threatening the president. In December 2010, Spencer pleaded guilty, telling the court that he was upset over his mother's death and he had fallen in with a white supremacist group because it helped him kick a drug habit. A U.S. district judge sentenced him to 33 months in prison. Obama was also threatened on numerous occasions by prison inmates and homeless people, the majority of whom suffered from mental illness. In February 2010, 29-year-old Christopher Coates was due to be released from Red Onion State Prison in Virginia after having spent his entire adult life in prison for repeatedly demonstrating his propensity for violence. In 2009, Coates mailed a letter from the prison stating he would kill President Obama and kill his wife and children. Coates also stated that he would kill the prison warden. His letter contained numerous racial slurs and was smeared with his own blood. When interviewed by Secret Service agents and the Federal Bureau of Investigation, he admitted writing the letter. Coates was charged with threatening the president. He pleaded guilty and was sentenced to the maximum possible sentence of 10 years in prison for mailing threatening communications and threatening the life of the president of the United States. After the sentencing, U.S. Attorney Timothy Heppe said, When a man with such a violent past threatens others, we must hold him accountable. Another person was 62-year-old Timothy Cloud, a transient who sent envelopes addressed to the Social Security Administration offices in New York, Kansas City, and Baltimore. Each contained a white powdery substance and an index card with the words, You stole my money and die. Police, fire, and hazardous material teams responded to emergency calls at each location. Employees had to be quarantined and affected areas decontaminated. The same day, a similar envelope was mailed to the White House with the words, You are just another lying politician. He also enclosed a newspaper photo of Obama with sniper crosshairs drawn over the president's face. Cloud was arrested in San Francisco and charged with four counts of sending anthrax hoax letters, four counts of mailing threatening communications, one count of threatening the president, and one count of crossing state lines after failing to register as a sex offender. He pleaded guilty in May 2010 and was sentenced to 20 years in prison. On December 30, 2009, New Orleans drug dealer John Turnpaw threatened President Obama by calling the New Orleans Police Department 911 operator and saying, Yeah, hey, I'm going to kill President Barack Obama and his wife this month. The New Orleans Police Department and Secret Service agents investigated the call located Turnpaw, and advised him of his rights. Turnpaw admitted his guilt. During their investigation, agents also discovered that Turnpaw was selling marijuana and was illegally in possession of several firearms in furtherance of his drug trafficking. Turnpaw was sentenced to serve 36 months in prison for the threat against President Obama and a consecutive sentence of 60 months on the gun and drugs charges. President Obama was a recipient of numerous threats by mass murderers and terrorists, both domestic and foreign. Norwegian Anders Bering Breivik 
plotted to assassinate Obama at the 2009 Nobel Peace Prize ceremony, where the president collected his peace prize. He had planned to drive a car packed with explosives onto the square next to Oslo City Hall and detonate it while the Nobel ceremony was taking place. He said the Obama attack would have been largely symbolic, as the security surrounding the visit would have prevented him from bringing the vehicle sufficiently close to the ceremony. With hundreds of millions watching on television, Brevik believed it would have been a perfect way to promote his anti-Islamic message. He scrapped the plan because security would have been too tight to get anywhere close to the president. Brevik went on to commit Norway's worst atrocity of modern times when he set off a bomb in the center of Oslo, which killed eight people, then went on a shooting rampage on the island of Utøya, killing another 69, many of them teenage members of the Norwegian Labor Party's youth wing attending a summer camp. The killings were designed to draw attention to the purported Marxist-Islamic takeover of Europe. In May 2011, Irish Muslim militant Terry Khalid, as he was known, Kelly, was arrested for threatening to assassinate President Obama during the president's trip to Ireland for the G8 summit. Kelly was a former Catholic altar boy from inner-city Dublin who'd converted to Islam while in prison in Saudi Arabia in 2000 for selling illegal alcohol. On his return to Ireland, Kelly praised al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden on Irish TV. Kelly trained with the Taliban in northwest Pakistan and married a Pakistani woman. He named one of their two sons Osama, a name he said to be proud of. Kelly told Britain's Sunday Mirror newspaper they expected al-Qaeda to kill Obama during his visit to Ireland because the country's police force was poorly armed. He also said terrorists would likely pay up to $1.4 million to anyone who was prepared to kill Obama. Kelly said he would like to do it himself, but was too well known. Personally, I would feel happy if Obama was killed, he said. How could I not feel happy when a big enemy of Islam is gone? He was arrested at his home in Dublin on suspicion of threatening to kill the president. The Islamic terrorist organization, called Al-Qaeda Ake, planned several attacks on August 17, 2010, on Indonesia's Independence Day. The plot included an attempted coup and the assassination of Obama during his visit to the country. But it was foiled when local police stumbled upon a terrorist training camp in the northern province of Ake. Anti-terror police units conducted raids on terrorist hideouts based upon intelligence obtained for the interrogation of suspects arrested during the Ake operation. The police arrested 20 suspected terrorists and seized a cache of firearms, ammunition, documents, and the plans for an Independence Day attack. In 2012, Obama was targeted by a domestic terror group of soldiers called FEAR, which stands for Forever Enduring, Always Ready. Led by Army Private Isaac Agugi, who described himself as the nicest cold-blooded murderer you will ever meet. He funded the militia using $500,000 in insurance and benefits payments from the death of his pregnant wife in 2010. Agugi was not charged in his wife's death, but prosecutors claimed it was highly suspicious. In 2012, the soldiers brought 80 <laughs> In 2012, the soldiers bought $87,000 worth of guns and bomb-making materials and plotted to take over Fort Stewart in Georgia, bomb targets in Savannah and Washington state, as well as assassinate President Obama and overthrow the federal government. The conspiracy was exposed when the four men were charged with the murder of Michael Rourke, who had been in on the plot but then fell out with the others and his teenage girlfriend. And more foreign assassination attempts came. When Navy SEALs raided Osama bin Laden's hideout in Pakistan in 2011, killing the al-Qaeda leader, they found a cache of documents that provided insight into his future plans to assassinate American leaders. His prime target was President Obama. In an undated letter, bin Laden wrote, We want to cut the tree at the root. He plotted to bring down Obama's plane, as it mean the accession of Joe Biden to the presidency. He wanted Biden as president because he was utterly unprepared for the presidency, the document said. Accordingly, it wrote, Biden was to remain unharmed. Bin Laden set up two units in Pakistan and Afghanistan to attack aircraft carrying Obama. Bin Laden hoped Pakistani terrorist Ilyas Kashmiri would carry out the attacks. Please ask Brother Ilyas to send me the steps he has taken into that work, Bin Laden wrote to his top lieutenant, Atia Abdul Rahman. A month after Bin Laden's death, Kashmiri was killed in a U.S. drone attack. Perhaps the most dangerous threat to President Obama's life came from 21-year-old Oscar Ramiro Ortega Hernandez, who had criminal records in Idaho, 
Texas, and Utah for crimes involving drugs, underage drinking, domestic violence, 